Okay, we are evaluating the flux integral where the vector field has components negative x, uh, 0, and z, right? The j component is 0. S consists of the paraboloid f of x equals x squared plus y squared for z between 0 and 1, and the disk x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 at a height of 1. And then there's this note that I gave you. Uh, this requires the evaluation of two integrals, and the paraboloid should be oriented downwards. Okay? Um, let, let's draw a picture to show you why. So the paraboloid then, z or f of x equals x squared plus y squared, looks something like this, right, where the origin is down here at the vertex. And we're cutting this thing off at a height of 1, right? But then at a height of 1, we're capping off this surface with the disk, x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is convenient because the radius of, of this uh, cross-sectional curve you get when you cut the paraboloid at a height of 1 is it, it's a circle of radius 1. So we're essentially capping this thing off and making a closed surface. So S is a closed surface. Um, we'll call S1 the paraboloid. And we'll call S2. OK, do you guys see that S2 is just a plane? It's part of a plane Yeah, that we've cut into a disk. So S2 is really the plane, part of the plane, z equals 1. Does that make sense? Okay, so what is S then? S is the closed surface that is a union of S1 and S2. And on any closed surface, the, con the convention is to orient the surface with the outward pointing unit normal vector. But for the paraboloid, the outward pointing N has to point slightly down. You can, see, can you see the K component on any end that you would draw? It would start to get more level up here, but down here it would point nearly straight down if you're near the vertex. So in any end that you draw on the paraboloid, it has to be downward pointing. Does that make sense? So that's the reason uh, for the note uh, about the paraboloid uh, should, point, should be oriented downwards. Okay, uh, and, and I'm referring to the, the normal vector there. Does that make sense? Okay, so this requires to evaluate the flux integral with respect to this vector field. Uh, this requires uh, two integrals, one over S1, one over S2, and then you add them together. Everybody with me? Okay, so let's talk then about kind of the formula we use for evaluating a flux integral. Um, if it's over, we'll start with S1, the, the paraboloid. The generic notation looks like this, right? Integral over S, or S1 in this case, F dot N DS, right? And then we use the calculation formula, integral over what, what we get, what, what region we get when we project the surface down into the into, in this case, the xy plane, which we'll call r, um, of f dot, is it going to be del g or negative del g? We could, we could use the negative del g notation here. And the reason I'm writing this formula before I'm ready to use it is this formula tells me what to do. If you look at it from the inside out, it tells me I need g so that I can find del g and then take the opposite of it, right? So what do we call G? Oh, well, there, there's a little bit uh, of a misleading notation here. It's Z that we, we call G, right? And I called it F here. Uh, that was accidental, but that's OK. We can look past it. OK. Uh, so I, I'll actually go back to calling it G, just, just so we're familiar with the notation. But it doesn't really matter 
if you call it G or not. Uh, it's just usually we refer to F as some, uh, lower, lowercase f as something else, so I didn't want to confuse you. So let's call it G. Okay, so what do we call uppercase G then? So over here, usually what we do is we set The, the given lowercase g, we set that equal to zero. So we set we, we get we get everything on one side. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to leave the z and then subtract off x squared, subtract off y squared, and then it's it's this guy that we call g of x y z. Right? Everybody believe that? Now, what is del g then? What is del G? Negative 2x i, right? Plus or minus. minus, actually, you're right. Minus 2yj, minus 2yj plus, k. plus k. All right. And then, so the way I've done it here is I would have to take negative del G to make this oriented downward. The, all, the, the alternative, I could have avoided all that if I had just brought the Z to the other side, right? And then when I took del G, K would have been negative automatically and I wouldn't take the negative. So just be aware of that. It's just a notational issue. So negative del G then is going to equal 2XI plus 2YJ minus K. So that's not a unit vector, but it is downward oriented, right? And then when we plug in the formula, it takes care of it for us. So f del g, f dotted with negative del g, rather, is going to be what? f dotted with negative del g. OK, well, let's go back up and look at the components of the vector field. I think we can squeeze it in here. So, okay, so we're going to do what? We're going to multiply the 2x here times the negative x here. What does that get us? So we're taking, we're taking f and dot, so f and dotting it with negative del g. So negative x times 2x is negative 2x squared. And then we're going to add in, uh, well, 0, right? The j component 0, isn't it? Times 2, who cares? It's 0, right? And then what's the third component going to be? Minus z, which I'll have to fix in a second. So you get negative 2x squared minus z. Does everybody believe that? But if we're going to turn this into an integral, double integral with respect to x and y, we need to do what with the z? Either substitute the x, yeah, x with x and y. Yeah, we need to substitute what z is equal to to get everything in terms of x and y. So x squared plus y squared goes in for z. So uh, when, we, when we do that, we end up subtracting x squared and y squared off, don't we? So we get... Uh, what, negative 3x squared minus y squared? Everybody see that? So we're subtracting this off. Subtract x squared, subtract y squared. Everybody agree with that? Okay. So then at least over S1, that's our integrand, isn't it? Okay, so then we could say that this integral is equal to the double integral. We'll talk about what what we get here in a second. Um, can I pull the negative out front and make it 3x squared plus y squared inside? And then uh, I'll, I'll say dA for now. And what's the region of integration look like? So if you project this straight down, what do you get? Well, think about it this way. What, what is this curve? It is a circle. 
and you get it when z is at a height of 1, right? So this curve, rectangularly, is described by x squared plus y squared equals 1, where z is at a height of 1, right? But if you project it down, it just becomes the circle in the xy plane, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. However, it's not quite a circle. It's a disk, isn't it? So would you agree then that that, that thing I'm calling r, I guess, would be the disk x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1? Any questions so far? Does that make sense? Okay, so, so this is r. So I'm just putting what r is there. Instead of inserting r, I'm, 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 I'm telling you exactly what r is instead of just calling it r. Uh, any questions on that? Now, no? Okay, so what am I going to do? Convert to polar. Good. Right away, don't mess with it, just convert to polar. Well, okay, uh, so it's a good habit to be in, especially for partial credit, to draw that region of, that you're integrating over in the xy plane. It's circle, radius 1, right? So I think we can do the, the limits of integration pretty quickly. Um, so we get, what do we get? We get the opposite of the inner, we'll figure out what that is in a second, r dr d theta. Uh, what does r run from? 0 to 1 theta? 0 to 2 pi. Okay. How are we going to handle the 3x squared plus y squared? Yeah, I don't I don't know if you I don't know if it would be any advantage to change. So so this is a thought that ran through my mind. I don't know if I'll do it. But uh you could change the 3x squared to 2x squared plus x squared plus y squared and then you get a you get an r right there, right? And then you could change then just put a, uh, r cosine theta in for x right there. Is that going to be helpful? I don't know if that's any better actually. But it was an idea that ran through my head. Um, so e either way, it's going to be kind of ugly. We'll do it. We'll do it the way you guys said. Um, so I'm going to need a little more room here. Let me drag this guy down and drag this guy. Whoops. Drag this guy over here. Okay. So if we do it your way. We get 3 times what r squared cosine squared theta for this first part. Yeah? And then plus what? r squared sine squared. And then you do need parentheses around that quantity, right? Because of that extra r there. Okay. So, so what? Um, Let's see. What would be the best way to integrate this thing? Uh, the, the best way would be to factor out the r squared, I guess, wouldn't it? Then you could separate the functions of, co of theta from r. So if we factor that thing out, okay, we still have that negative 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. If we factor out the, do you guys see the r squared on both of those? Then what do we have out, out here? r cubed, right? Everybody see that? And what's left inside? 3 cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? Ooh, not very pretty. Okay. And then I can write it as two separate functions at least. The integral uh, multiplied together. Two separate integrals multiplied together, that is. The integral from uh, 0 to 2 pi opposite a negative out in front of what? Just the stuff with theta in it. 3 cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Uh, and then d theta. And then integral 0 to 1 r cubed dr. Everybody agree? Okay. All right, well, this may not be so bad. Um, 
This, this integral will be easy. What about this one? What do we have to do with the cosine squared and the sine squared? Well, I guess we could do my idea of splitting it up and get a 1 out of there and then only have to do this 1. So maybe my idea would have been good to go with originally. Do you guys see what I'm talking about here? If we, I have to experiment with it to make sure this is easier, but if we broke this up to be 2 cosine squared theta, the, the, the 3 cosine squared theta to be 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, then at least we get rid of the, the sine squared theta, right? Because this part is equal to 1. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. So that's my idea. Uh, do you, uh, what do you think? You like it? So I guess I should have done that to begin with, but I ignored my instincts. So I get, what, 2 cosine squared theta just plus 1 there? Yeah? D theta? And then 0 to 1 r cubed dr? Okay, how would you maybe want to try integrating 2 cosine squared theta plus 1? Hmm. Well, let me take a time out to see if I can make an identity work here. I know that cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Anybody remember that? From trig? You don't <laughs> at least you're honest. Um, that, that's a well-known identity, a double angle. By the way, why can't you trust sine and cosine functions? It's an old joke. Why can't you trust the sine and cosine function, because they have double identities. Okay, they, uh, yeah, okay, I know. It's, it's not the comedian, it's the material. Um, the math only gives you so much. This is a double identity or double angle formula uh, for um, cosine. And if, if you replace, let's see if this is going to work. Uh, if you replace uh, sine squared theta with, isn't that 1 minus cosine squared theta? Isn't it? And then if you distribute the negative, oh, it's a negative one, so it's not going to work. Darn it. I'll have to edit that out of the video. Um, but you guys see where I was going? I was going to see, well, what would happen? So let's see uh, if, if I go ahead and distribute uh, this, I, I get the identity, f the other form of the identity, 2 cosine squared theta. And then it's a minus one, right? But maybe that would work nicely. So um, so let's see. So I could replace 2 cosine squared theta with cosine of 2 theta plus 1. You see where I'm going? Do you, do you believe that? So that this guy right here would go in, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, right here. And then that wouldn't be so bad to evaluate, would it? Is it any better? I don't know. <laughs> it took me so long to get here, it probably would have been faster your way, Scott. But I'm going to be stubborn and do it this way since I took the time to do it. Okay. Um, so yeah, th this definitely isn't the only way. So I'm going to do this. Negative, the opposite, 0 to 2 pi. So if I plug this guy in, cosine 2 theta plus 1, I'll get, let me do it, let me show the work here. Cosine 2 theta plus 1 goes in for 2 cosine squared theta plus another one. Gives me 2 all together there. So it'll look nice in the end after I erase all this junk. Okay. So any, any questions so far? That wasn't too crazy, was it? Now again, you could have just used your half, uh, your uh, power reducing formula, and that would have worked probably just as well. Um, so that's the opposite of the integral, 0 to 2 pi, 
cosine 2 theta plus 2 d theta. Um, and then this guy works out to be, what, 1 fourth, just 1 fourth, right? R to the fourth evaluated from 0 to 1 is just 1, isn't it? So that'll put a negative 1 fourth out in front. And then if I integrate cosine of 2 theta, what do I get? 1 half sine of 2 theta plus 2 theta. Evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Does everybody agree with that? Okay. And then, okay, I plug in 2 pi here, what happens to the sine? Sine of 4 pi is 0. So we get negative 1 fourth, 0 plus 4 pi. And then what happens if I plug in 0? Everything zeroes out. So I get negative pi. Yeah? Everybody agree with that? Okay. So that was the hard one, or the long one. And that's the integral, that's what, the flux integral over S1. But then there's also the flux integral over S2, right? But this one is deceptively simple. Um, so let's think about then just symbolically the flux integral over S2. F dot N DS, right? What's the uh, normal vector going to look like in that case? It's a, does everybody see that the normal vector on the flat plane that is S2 is just pointing, it's constant. It's pointing out a distance of 1 straight up. And that's a copy of K. We know it, goes, it has to go upward because we orient closed surfaces outward. So in this case, since it's flat and horizontal, and the inside of the surface is on the bottom below that, that disk, you orient by the uh, unit vector, unit normal vector pointing up, and that is just a constant k, which is 0, 0, 1, right? So that's, that's convenient to, to realize. So I'm not even going to use the del g formula here. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the integral over S2 of f dot k, which is the vector 0, 0, 1, if I use component form, ds. But then I know... That if I dot f with 0, 0, 1, the only thing that survives is the z component or the k component of f, right? Which happens to be z, I believe, if I remember right. Yeah. This is the only thing that survives that dot product. So you get that that's equal to the integral over s2 of just z ds. But what's the value of z on that surface? That's the only place that matters. z on that surface is 1. So this reduces this integral. I'll go to the right here just so you can see what I'm doing. This integral reduces to a surface integral. Remember, when the integrand is 1, you're just finding the surface area. So I meant, I meant surface area integral is what I meant to say. Oh, but it's just, you guys know how to find the surface area. It's just a disk of radius 1. What's the area enclosed by a circle of radius 1? Uh, let's see, pi r squared. So pi r squared where r is 1. So it's pi times 1 squared or just pi. Everybody believe that? Okay, and so what happens when you compute the surface area over S? F dot N DS, you end up adding the surface area over S1, which was what, negative pi? And uh, 
the surface integral, I should say, over S1, which was negative pi, and the surface integral over S2. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's the flux integral over S1 and the flux integral over S2. And you get zero. There you go. Well, that was fun. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's stop.